Alright then everyone, hello and welcome back to the Final Fantasy VI Blindfolded LLG. So in this episode, I'm gonna be trying to do the Phoenix Cave one more time. I mean, I haven't done it before, but <laughs> uh, I'm taking another attempt. So let's put the blindfold on here, quickly before the cutscene ends. Yeah, failing that. There we go. Just in time, not that it really matters. Alright, so basically right now, I have uh, two segments of the cave here to worry about. The first one's the cave segments, and the second one is the lava segments. And the thing about the lava parts is that the enemies in here, in those spots, can't really do much to me. They're not really a big deal. However, the cave segments are dangerous, because there's two encounters in here that contain phases. And phases can not be escaped from, so that pretty much means that maybe on a really off chance I'll nail the phase in the one encounter with the Traveler, but really most likely I'm just going to die. So left and up until I reach the top here. Fortunately, so I have to really minimize the amount of... Uh, steps I walk in the cave areas, at least with the team that A doesn't have the Moogle charm, and B when the other team isn't on a save point. Because once Mog is standing on that save point, Gogo's team is pretty much okay. I can just save scum my way through the rest of it, and avoid all that nasty luck reliant crud. So, all the way to the right, all the way to the top. It's, I'll get anywhere between zero and three encounters with, in the cave area with Gogo's team. And I think the odds are around two to three that I'll die on any given encounter in the cave. So, now I just gotta go around this object. It's, it's looking like it's not gonna be two encounters at, I mean, it's looking like it's not gonna be three encounters at this point. Two. Alright, I believe I might have made it into the lava segment. And that battle not only is going to be in the lava area, so it's not going to be very dangerous. The fact that I walked so far down there before getting the fight means that I'm definitely in the lava area properly. I didn't mess up my navigation. So that's perfect. So if I can get that same amount of luck on the second time I have to go through the cave, the the second time I have to go through the cave, it's shorter than the first time, so it's less likely I'll get an encounter there. But I also lose a lot more progress. So I would really prefer that would not happen. <coughs> this time around, as opposed to last time, if I have gone around a while without an encounter by the end of the lava segment, I'll try and engineer an encounter on purpose, and just run away from that. As you may have noticed, I've got the barrier ring and the mithril glove equipped just to put a little bit of extra delay on that ATB gauge and like on what the enemy's actions can do and give myself more time to escape so might as well do that and of course I've got the back garden gale hairpin handy as always so with all that going for me a lot of the segments aren't too bad even though I can't just ignore them heavily with vanish like I could the last like eight dungeons. That should be far enough. I didn't have to walk that far down there. And I go left and I don't have to walk very far there either. I just need to start walking down and right for a while. I think I have to go right next. And like clockwork, everyone just escapes right as soon as uh, everything comes up. On my test runs, Edgar kept getting plowed, like every encounter. <laughs> I don't know why. It would just be like one enemy would always just murder Edgar. But so far that doesn't seem to have been happening in the real runs, so. Up, and then right and down. The nice thing about that other area is that I can pretty much just back out the way I came in from the area 
from after I came out the uh, door in this room to when I hit the switch, I can pretty much just completely hit the reverse button on my stuff to get back to the doorway, so that makes things a little bit easier. Alright. So, left one up a lot to get to the top of this bridge. There's one bend in the bridge, unfortunately, which makes this a little bit more nasty, but it's still not too bad since, uh, you know, it's just one bend. It's not curving all over this p the place. This dungeon in general has is very forgiving in terms of the navigation because, well, at least so far it's been because, A, there's uh, dungeon elements making noise and stuff. That's always nice. I probably made it to the top. I mean, I obviously made it to the top where I would have had a battle by now, obviously. But there's also the fact that everything's just laid out so nicely that I generally just end up having the easiest navigation route I could possibly think of to get anywhere. Which makes things a lot nicer. Yeah, I must have made it there too. Alright, so I might want to put in my, into action my plan from last time. Okay, so I did get a battle there after all. So on second thought, I'm just gonna wing it and run for the exit when I take control of this team again. Ooh, parried. Oh, sorry to whoever that was. So yeah, let's just finish off the small bit of navigation that I had to do there. I wouldn't even be surprised if I had already made it to the end of... into that little notch beside the, uh, big movie platform thing. Thankfully, I can move here before the uh, platform actually moves anywhere, which makes the navigation easier, later a little bit easier. So now I switch back to Mog's team. The multi-party dungeon gimmick, unlike a lot of the other gimmicks in this game, has almost no effect on me because I'm blindfolded. Like seriously, it does pretty much nothing. It's just not the sort of thing that really makes any difference at all. I mean, I guess sometimes I have to keep track of what I was worried about with one party or something like that when I switch to the other party. Down the hole. Now that I think about it, though, it might make a bigger difference in Brave New World, because I'll have to remember eight cursors instead of four. Which is more than I'm used to. But here, it's just navigation, so it does nothing at all. Just go down and right until I reach the... bottom area here, because this area is very kind to me, like the most of the rest of the dungeon is, because... I just go down and right, and then down and left. It lines me up perfectly with the door. I don't have to do anything finicky to actually work my way through this area. It could have been a lot worse, that's for sure. And right at the end of this, I'll hit a switch to tell me that I've made it to the top. So I've probably made it there by now. Up all the way. Hit the screen transition, then walk to the top, and then I'm right next to the switch. In my test runs, I think I kept forgetting this switch here, <laughs> but I seem to have been having no problem with it here. Alright, so grab the wing edge, and I just go up and right until I hit the spike. Walk back onto the spike. Sorry, Mog. Is this a beast of boogles or something? Spike 2, spike 3. Now I just walk up to the top left. I end up in this little uh, outcropping of rock over the water here. I'm not quite lined up with the door, but I'm close enough that I just need to take one step back and then down. And now I'm up towards the top here. That's a little bit easier than going back through the lava cave. If I was taking the other party I'm through this area, I might have had them go through the 
go backwards through the lava cave. The navigation would have been harder, but there were, would have been less phases, but turns out the other way is probably better, because this way I can save scum for longer times on the save point. And get more distance with the other party. Up. Now this is sort of like three letters here. So it's just laid out as first there's an S. I mean, it's kind of a sideways S here. Well, it's not really sideways, it's just kind of stretched out weird. Right? Yeah, I tried to open the menu there and couldn't, which is a good sign because it means that I was jumping across the rocks at the time. So now the next letter is a C. It's a backwards C, but it's a C nonetheless. Left across these rocks too. I don't I'm not gonna bother menu tricking that time. And the third bridge is an L. Just to be honest here is just the left and up, but whatever. Now I need to make sure to go right and down here as opposed to down and right, or this would end badly. Actually it wouldn't end too badly because I'd know how to get out of it. Even if I was just like, oh shoot, I went the wrong way first, but Okay, so now the moment of truth. Can I make it through this next area with this party without getting a battle? Because that would be very nice. Because this is the last time I have to walk through in a place with phases before the save point. Up all the way. Left all the way. Okay, just one more movement here. I don't get a battle right away, and I'm good. There we go. Phew. Okay. So now I just walk out of this area with the switch, and I'm pretty much home free from this point because the navigation here is very straightforward, and Mog cannot hit any encounters, so he's not going anywhere. Mog and his Moogle charm is a lifesaver. So up and right until I reach the top, which is not too far away, I guess, but there is a screen transition. Often when I'm only walking one direction with the right and up, it takes a lot longer than feels like it should. Left. Well, when I'm walking predominantly one direction with the right and up anyway, if I'm only walking one direction, that's just called going straight up. And all the way to the left, that's not too far. Back one, and... Ding! Nice. And, it, and not even 13 minutes to the fastest in my first run, where I failed a little bit before the save point. See you next time! Well then, who's ready for some blindfolded saves coming? <laughs> so... In this part, I'm just going to be using my save ability to avoid these phases as much as possible. Makes it really a lot easier. One, two. Well, I suppose not easier, just less time consuming. But I can only really save when I know where I am. I mean, I could technically go and save at an after every battle and then if I happen to find out that I'm in the wrong spot, I can, like, reload and check where I am sort of thing, but I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to abuse it to that extent. Oh, wow. Hit a battle before I even hit the spikes. Let's see if it's something I can escape from. Yeah, I'm starting to think that this is not a battle I can escape from. So, uh, time to test things out. Escape. Down two to the reset option. I mean, I'm not really as familiar with the emulator menu as I am with the game's menu, but... Same principle, right? The thing is, I need to actually legitimately reset. I can't just let them kill me, because... It, uh, well, A, there's the fact that letting them kill me is surprisingly much of a pain in the butt, with Gogo -Go having to pretty much attack them and hope for the, to get blowfished, but there's also the fact that the random number generator will stay the same if I do that, so I'll just keep running into the same encounter over and over again, that won't be helpful at all. Right, 
two, all the way to the top. The first place I'm slated for a safe spot is after these spikes. I can re very reasonably get there without any battles at all, so... Apparently that's not what decided to happen, though. Let's see, is it phases this time? Yep, it seems to be phases again. Well, if you ever wanted to experience the joy of doing the Phoenix Cave in an LLG, this is it. Pure, unmitigated joy. Another thing about the emulator menu is that it doesn't make any noise when I move the cursor in it. <laughs> Let's try again. Well, that's certainly different than last time. It really just depends on whether this is phases or not, though. And it is not, so I'm good. Hopefully now I should be able to make it to the end of the spikes without an encounter. Right, two, all the way to the top. Since I can't get battles on the spikes, they actually help me out here. Because obviously they're not very... They can't kill me, so that's not a concern. Oh, and they also set me down to low HP, making the barrier cube slash, uh... Mithril Glove Strat work a little bit better. So made it to the end of that. So I know exactly where I am, which means I can just, uh... Waste my potions, apparently. Well, Gogo's at full HP now. Uh, that was helpful. Oh yeah, I guess because it reset, it moved my cursor off of save. Dang it, I thought I was smart by putting my cursor on save before I started the segment, but apparently not. Alright, so I just go down and left to reach the bottom here. Now I go up once, and left. And I did not enter the menu there, so I'm good there. This one's long, so I better... One, two, three. So now I go down one, and then I can just walk... Up. Whoa, uh... Did I get battle on, the like, the first step or something? Because I think there's only one step there that I could have gotten an encounter on before the, uh... thingy bob that I'm trying to jump across. Oh, someone just died. Someone else just died. Well, I made it across there. Save spot number two. This one's not really important. Because... Save spot number three is not too far away. And I don't save a ton of time by going through... By saving again in this room, but whatever, might as well. Saves me a little bit of time if I happen to get a phase encounter just before the switch. Which is save point number three. So yeah, now I gotta walk up for a bit. Gotta do one jumpy segment and one screen transition in the middle, so it's fairly long. But it's still not bad as doing pseudo-diagonals, so... in general, just to go straight in one direction down one, all the way to the left. Now flick the switch. Alright, so switch to Mog. I said switch to Mog. There we go. Now I'm going to save once, and then I'm just going to walk down to the bottom here. That'll cut out the odds of me getting a phase here. But, 
since that was just straight down, I'll take it as I know I'm where I am and save again. Because I don't want to get an encounter after I've moved Mog to the switch. So switch back to Mog. So switch back to Mog. going on cuz oh wait yeah I forgot cuz Mog is standing on the safe point and I didn't walk off the safe point with my other party so yeah this is Mog's party It's the same reason why that happened is the reason why you can use tents with the other party when you're standing on a safe point with the first party. It's kind of funny in the Game Boy remake because they didn't patch that out or anything. They just left it in there and you can use tents walking near the uh, green guys walking around, the same ones that are in Gogo's lair. You can use tents near the green guys walking around the dragon's den, just like camp out right next to them. It's like yeah, hey, want to come camping with me on this random wooden bridge here? There's just kind of like an L shape there, backwards L, where I have to go two spaces each time. There we go. Made it to there. Gotta remember to go switch to my other party. And I'll do the menu trick to make sure of when I've switched, because those transitions are surprisingly long. Hang on, I was supposed to check my menu as it... I was going across that. So I'll walk back one step. That should bring me back the other direction. Just want to make absolute sure of where I am. Yeah, that was fine. This should be Mog. And I hear that nice satisfying <laughs> noise when I step off the switch. Mog's navigation isn't quite as nice as the other party's navigation here, but... It's not too big a deal, considering this entire portion is being Moogle charmed out of existence, essentially, so it's not bad if I have to redo it. So I gotta go back one, all the way down. Alright, so far this segment's still going fine. Now I don't want to fight the red dragon here. Let's see, is it phases? Do I have to restart? It's not a big deal, because I just took, like, one step. Nope, apparently I'm escaping just fine. It's down all the way to the bottom, and I go left and down from here, and that should line me up fairly close to the red dragon, but hopefully not fighting him. It's possible that he can wander up into this area, but hopefully that's not the case. Because I'm not really prepared right now to fight him. Alright, so that probably did it. Let's end that segment off there for reals. I'm not gonna exit this menu just yet, because... I don't want to run into the red dragon. See you next time.